So, today, we're going to actually head upstairs to my all-loving dining room, actually, and we're going to install another smart switch. Now, I've done several smart switch installs before, several of which were sent to me. This one I bought myself, but it actually is kind of a duplicate of one I already have. So this is uh, Lutron's Caseta Wireless, or Caseta Wireless, sorry. Um, this is their smart switch. It's just an on-off switch, no dimming control capability. Uh, 5 amp capability, uh, so you can actually power a fan with this, but it is three-way capable. So this, alongside with a standard mechanical switch, which I'm already going to use the one in place, which actually is the Lutron Claro uh, switch um, that I already have in place upstairs. Um, but this on one side, a standard or run-of-the-mill mechanical switch on the other side. It can be any mechanical switch, and we're going to install them. So we have a smart three-way system. Hey folks, welcome back to Geek Smart. So today we're doing an install on the Lutron smart switch in a three-way setting. So this is essentially the same smart switch I installed in my bedroom um, alongside, uh, next to my fan control switch that I got from Lutron uh, themselves. Um, in this case, this is going to go into a three-way. So this is the first smart three-way setup I've ever done. I've never, I don't really mess with three-way stuff. Um, so this is going to be a learning experience for me as well as for you. Now first, I am not a certified electrician at all. I've done electrical work in my house and I feel fairly comfortable not hurting myself. Um, really, as long as you kick the power off properly and there is no power going to the box, you're really not going to hurt yourself, but you want to make sure that you don't have the wires touching or messed up before you kick the power back on. So, with that said, we're going to open this up, take a peek at what comes with it, and then we're going to head upstairs and install it. Okay, so let's get this guy open. I love packaging. Yay, yay, packaging. Actually, this plastic stuff, it sucks. All right, so we're gonna get out here. There is the stuff. All right, so it's gonna come with a few pieces. I don't know exactly how everything's gonna go in here yet. It does come with a pigtail. Comes with, it looks like five wire nuts. Uh, the screws obviously to attach it. On the back here we have five wires. Uh, including a ground wire. So there we are there. Instructions that come with it. Let's take a peek at the instructions. I'm going to need stuff that's in English. Haha. So you can see on the instructions right away it says single pole. Single pole setup. Well that's not going to help us a whole lot. Where is it say about up? Aha. So right down here at the bottom, I don't know how well you can see that. Um, it says if you're doing one or more switch in a three-way, we got to go to casetawireless.com slash three-way to pick up that. So I'm actually going to download that or get that on my phone and uh, we'll take a peek at that. Okay, well, there's 93 pages. 93 pages and of course in here we have to pick out uh, which setup we're doing. I'm going to have to read through this see which setup we're going to do. Okay, didn't take me too long. So there's, they do separate out. The second section is with a mechanical switch, me mechanical toggle switch, which is what we're doing. Uh, and we're doing one with the neutral wire with the the 5ANS. So the third one down is the PD-5ANS. That's the one that we're going to use. Um, so that's page 33 to 35, it looks like. Let me scroll on to that. Yep, so this is the setup, and if you're going to obviously do this yourself, you're going to want to go to this page. Now, of course, you know, depending on your setup, depending how many switches, they're showing switch one, switch two. They show the wires for the smart part. They show the wires, and there's where that uh, little pigtail is going to go in with the mechanical switch. And, uh, yeah, and they even give you the diagram of how things go. So if you have to troubleshoot, you can do that. So that said, let's head upstairs and start installing because you know what learn by doing step one find the breaker dining room 10 that'd be it right there 
Okay, so now that the circuit breaker is turned off, and this is the side that's dead. This side is actually still alive. So in this case, if you're going to actually have to get into anything, this obviously the, the wires on this side will be live. And if you know that, the best thing to do would be actually kill the power on this side as well. Um, otherwise, like this is the only one I'm gonna actually mess with. So I'm gonna go with that. I'm actually gonna kill the power on this one as well, just so I'm safe. But this is the only one we're gonna mess with. So let me, I'm gonna go down there, do that real quick, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm gonna use a headlamp here to give a little bit of light, um, but now, I know that it's safe to, to work with this. I'm going to go ahead and remove the cover. Okay. Now, like I said, we're going to be working on this one, not this one. So that's the one we're going to actually deal with right now. I'm going to go ahead and re release the screws on this. And of course, mine's a little different because I have a piano real close to this switch, so it's a a little tighter than normal. Now, on these three-way switches, we're gonna have one screw that's gonna be different color than the rest, all right? So this screw, that's gonna be the one we have to, lay. You, you, best way to do it would be labeling this wire. So you, you tag this wire so you know this is the one that's actually going to the odd screw. And then the other two are gonna be your control wires. So this is the one that actually is, uh, controlling or coming from but that's the one we want to make sure that we we know so in this case it is the black wire the white and the red are not so um, if you can remember that great uh, looks like the ground actually was never fully connected on this one either so that's another thing we're gonna want to do on the next switch is to connect the ground too that's not cool uh, Oh, this is a, yeah, this is a metal box with, the box itself is grounded on these older homes, so they're probably going by the fact that this is all grounded, but, and yeah, the, since the box is grounded, this would be grounded, so, alright, well, that's fine. I'm going to actually, because in this case with the, uh, with the Lutron, we will actually have to run the ground wire here back and ground it. Technically it's also being grounded by the box through the screw as well, but it's always best to actually run the ground wire as well. And then we'll have these other wires to deal with. Okay, so in our case, we're we're gonna have several wires here, right? We have the ground, obviously that's gonna get grounded. The white wire here is gonna be for our neutral. That's not gonna connect to either of these wires. It's gonna actually connect to the neutral in the back of the box, that's that guy. Then we have these three wires which are actually gonna connect to these three wires. And my different color, my flagged wire here in black is actually gonna to connect to my red wire here. The other two, we're gonna to have to notate. Which one's gonna to connect to the blue, which one's gonna to connect to the black. We're just gonna to wanna to notate which one connects to which. In this case, I think I'm just gonna go um, maybe you white to blue and red to black. It doesn't really matter. But we just want to notate this. Maybe leave this out while you go to the other side where we actually verify that those are actually connected properly. At the same time, you could also pull the other one out right when you can and just uh, go through the instructions, which uh, I'm going to put a link down in the bottom of the description. That's what we're, I'm going by here because it's going to tell you which color goes to this. So in this case, uh, the noted wire that goes to step on uh, which is going to connect to the blue guy. That's going to be, let's say, let's it's red. That's the one we're going to connect to the same side as the uh, as the uh, different colored screw. We have this guy. This guy here is going to be the whatever wire you connect to this blue guy. That's going to be the same color wire you're going to connect to this on the other side to the mechanical switch. So. Yay, I'm gonna pull the other one open just to see what, how I have it wired so I don't have to rewire that side. And then we'll, uh, we'll get this wired up. So as you can see here, I have the opposite, that funky colored screw here. That's the, our noted wire. Then the one that's connected on the same side as this is the red wire. That is the wire we're gonna connect to the blue wire on um, the Caseta switch. We are gonna have to modify this a little bit. So this we are gonna take this off here in a minute uh, and uh, do a thing with the jumper wire that came with your Caseta switch. Um, but to start at least, um, that's gonna be what I'm gonna connect the blue wire to. So I don't have to mess with these two at least. This is the only one I'll have to mess with. 
I apologize if any lines were showing up before I guess the frequency of my headlamps a little bit funny with the LEDs. But either way, I had to pull this cat. I'm just getting this way out of the way. Um, in this case, this is my neutral setup back here. That's just wired out it together. I have my three wires. I have my ground back here. Uh, in this case, I may have to get a ground, an extra ground wire. Um, I don't know if I, should, if I can really get this in there. This might not be long enough really, but I may have to, have to extend that guy. But maybe not. So again, neutral wire, this here, it's gonna go, that's gonna where that's gonna go. Um, we have the ground wire that's going to be connected to the ground, which is going to be your bare copper parts. Uh, that red wire off from the other side is going to connect to my blue. The black wire here is going to connect to my red because that's the one that we flagged that's on the off color uh, switch on or off colored screw on the switch. That means the white wire actually in this case is going to connect to my black wire here. Your coloration is going to be maybe a little bit different. But you just got to follow the guidelines, follow the step-by-step the -step procedure in the layout of the three-way. And they have so many different things if you're going to use a Pico switch with this or whichever. I'm using a mechanical switch in my case, so that's how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to get lined up and then uh, see if I can... I, I may have to do this one off camera because I'm just going to have to get it at a different angle just to try to get this in there. So give me a minute. Okay, so I have my neutral wire connected to my neutral, my ground to my ground. My red wire is connected to the one that we flagged from the the one that came off of the funky colored switch here. That's what goes to our red wire. We determined on the other side that my blue wire is going to connect to the red wire. So I'm gonna I still have to put the wire nut on that one, but that was that's my last one. And I am and I did replace even the one back there. I replaced the wire nut with a, a new wire nut because well let's just face it, the other wire nut that was in there was it's old, 50 years old, so they don't last forever. They start getting a little funky, but everything's now wired up. In that case, now I get to play around with folding these wires kind of up so I can actually get this in the box. If you have deeper boxes, it's a lot easier. In this case, I'm just going to have to fight it a little bit. Uh, so let, give me a second. Let me, let me see if I can't squeeze them in there, and then we'll go to the other side. Last item here is... Because I am in a two gang outlet, I am sharing space. These flanges on the on the side that's actually sharing, basically the sharing side, I'm actually going to take those off. That way, it doesn't actually butt up to this too hard. Um, otherwise, it's they're great because they do sit on top of the drywall and they give you a good flange. But this side, because I'm not sitting on drywall, I'm actually sharing a space with another switch. I'm gonna remove that. If you're putting this into just a single gang out where it's just this switch only, you can leave everything in place. So I'm just going to take, all you got to do is just take your pliers, just kind of wiggle it back and forth a couple times, and it just kind of breaks off. Real easy. Um, now, if you watched my other videos, I did do this uh, on a different switch, and I didn't pay attention if I was right side up or upside down before when I took off the first one. Um, so even if you remove these three, it's not going to be the end of the world. It doesn't really matter. They're not needed. Um, but do make sure you take off the side that it's if it's against another switch or something like that. Not that you have to, but I'm going to leave them actually sit like this while we do the other side. Uh, that way, if you do have to come back to this and verify what wires you had for what, you can do that. Let's head over to the other side and uh, and do that guy. Kind of looking forward to seeing how this works. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to remove the wire here, the flag, the the wire that actually has with the special screw. We're going to remove that one. And then we're going to remove the wire that's on the opposite side. So you have the fancy screw and then the, the one wire, which is our flagged wire, the one we connected to the blue wire on the other side, the red one. We're going to keep that connected right there. We're going to take this one off. We're going to take this one off. And we're going to actually twist those together with a jumper wire. Those three are going to go together, and then the jumper wire is going to connect to our special screw here. This guy over here is going to remain empty. We're not going to actually put anything back in there. So... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove these, and then we'll continue. Now I'm actually going to take these, I'm going to actually, this one's a pretty long right now, I'm going to shorten it down a little bit, so it's not too crazy long for putting, for spinning them together. Now I'm going to take the three, so this would have been our, our the fly wire from the, the special screw and then the opposite side wire. We're going to take all three of these with our, the, this jumper wire came with the kit. So 
That's all we're doing. Okay. Now this will connect here, essentially. Um, let me see here. So I just stripped back this a little bit more, uh, just so I could actually spool it around. So not to say it's a necessity, but she grabs on real good when you do it that way. And there we go. So uh, the screw on the other side, I'm going to go ahead and put that guy in. And I want to see if I have a extra ground wire for that. Okay, so I did add my ground wire. It's just kind of a backup, but you know, it's just, it's the right way to do it. Um, I have my red wire here, which I'm gonna tighten that up just to make sure she's nice and tight. There we go. I have all three, or the two wires that we're gonna connect here with my, my jumper, my jumper going to here. So now, and, and technically you could connect both of these one to each side of that. That'd be another way of doing it, to be honest about it. Um, in their manual, this is how they have it set. So I'm gonna do it how they have it set. Now I'm gonna see if I can't get this all fit in there again. Okay, so I did get it all in. Now I'm just tightening this against the wall. And we are gonna to wanna to put the protective covers on before we stick the power back on. Um, just because it's the right thing to do, right? Okay, let's go to the other side and get that one done. Now before we go too tight, we wanna make sure that we have enough space for the cover to go back on. If there's any kind of uh, tweaking that you have to do, now's the time to do it. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this guy out a little bit. And there we have it. There's my light switches. Obviously this is the new one. Uh, this is the old grand simple one. Um, so let's go ahead and kick the power back on and see how this guy works. And in my case I had two breakers to kick back on now, but kick them both on. We'll head upstairs. Okay, so this yep, yeah, where our power's back on. Don't know if we have to set this up or what we have to do to get that to work. Okay, well, if you turn it if you come up and you try to turn it on and nothing is happening and you know power is on to it, because maybe the rest of the stuff works. Well, it's basically because of one thing. So I actually already changed it, but I had my black coming off of my switch here to connect it to the white, and I had the red connected to the black wire. And that's kind of what it showed in the book, but obviously this isn't getting power. It's getting, The neutral was connected, but the live wasn't. So I kind of traced the wires out, and that's the only two I switched. I switched the red now connecting to my white wire, the black wire connecting to my black wire. So that's the only thing is I switched here, just these two leads real quick. And now we should be set. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in the hole. And yeah, so mistakes happen. Obviously in this case, the neutral, which is your opposite, right? We're not gonna really fry each other here, but we wanna make sure we have it correct before we go too much further. So I'm gonna button this back up and then we're gonna cave it another try. Oh. So, Everything's button back up. We're gonna kick the power on one more time. Hopefully this works properly. Now I killed the power over here as well, just so no worries about electrocuting myself. Uh, it's always better to play on the, uh, on the side of caution than anything else, uh, but I have everything put back together here and we're gonna run downstairs, kick the power back on and hopefully it comes on this time. All right, power's back on again. Hey, I come up here this time and that is a good sign. And we have light. And we don't have light. Let's go check the other side. Oh yeah. Now I like to put it, let's say on over here. Let's go check the other one again. Off. Perfect. She works. All right, so here we are in the app store. We're gonna go ahead and open up the Lutron app. 
that's what it looks like. Now I already have this set up, and in this case I'm not showing you how to set up the app. If you want to have, know how to set this app up, I will link to some other videos that I have in the past down below. But you can see other stuff that I have here. In this case we're adding another device. So the little gear up icon on the top left corner, we're going to click on that. And once that loads up, we're going to hit add a device or add device. So add device. And then it's going to ask us the type of device we actually want to add. In this case, it's a switch. So the in-wall dimmer switch or fan control. We have an in-wall switch. So we'll click on that. It's telling us to hold the off button, the light off button, up uh, for 10 seconds until the LED blinks quickly. Let's do that quick. So here we are. We're going to push and hold this until that LED blinks quickly, which is about 10 seconds. It's a little less, actually. There we go. And on the app, you can see it automatically switched over there. If you, if you caught that, I'm going to get myself back on my tripod real quick. This is actually my dining room. So I'm going to select dining room and hit next. This controls ceiling lights. It's the main ceiling light that it controls. You can change, however, whatever kind of thing, if it's a ceiling fan light or a chandelier, whatever you want it to do, whatever you want to call it. So the main lights in this case. And now it's going to add the device and save it into my profile in my Lutron app. Done. If you want to add another device, you can if you have another one ready to go. Otherwise, I am done. And we can go back to, well, in this case, the main app and see all the other switches. And now we should be able to control the main dining room light from the app. So let it finish set up here. Okay, so now we have under dining room, we have main lights. If I click on the main light, I can do on or off. I do not have a dimmer on this one. It's either on or off. And same thing with this. If you already have uh, your assistants, in that case Siri, Amazon's assistant, as well as Google's assistant, if you have those set up, you may have to go into those apps to add in the device or uh, maybe I'll show you in this case on the home app. So for instance, this is my home app that you can see the various accessories. I didn't add anything to it, but if I scroll down here, you can see there is the dining room main lights. So if I click on that, it's on. If I click on that, it's off. Now it's not assigned to a room probably yet because, uh, let's see here. Well, wouldn't you know, if I actually go to down here at the bottom, there is dining room, and it's there. So I didn't even have to do anything. The integration between Lutron and Apple's HomeKit is seamless. I didn't have to change a thing. Well, that works great. So you can see the main lights of the dining room on off. Um, now, let's take a peek at the, the Google Home app real quick. So we can see here in the Google Home app, kitchen, living room, master bedroom, groups, dining room, on. Off. So in this case, it's grouped into here, linked to me, but does not actually live in my home yet. So in here, you would have to actually uh, link it to a room. So you'd have to add it to a room. Uh, in this case, dining room, hit next. And now we're, we have it linked to a room. We can just hit the turn on or turn off button. So that's the Google Home app. The um, Apple, I'm going to try to say Apple's, or I'm sorry, uh, Amazon's assistant, we're probably going to have to do the, the whole um, find device item as well. So let's take a peek here and go to devices, see if it actually found anything automatically. Lights, house, lamp, I don't know what that is. Um, so no, we'd have to do a discover devices and then we could actually find it in there by that. And of course I looked at lights, not switches. Let's go back here, try one more time. So again, yes, it's not all in here. Let's see what happens if I just do the discover. Alexa, discover devices. Starting discovery. This will take a few moments. So we'll give it a few Power moments. On your new devices now, and if needed, put them in pairing mode. So it found it automatically, but you did have to do the discover devices for it to actually show up. Let's take a peek in here. This is all devices in here. I didn't see it, but that doesn't mean it's not here. Maybe I have to update the app to, could be, I just have to update this. And so there's dining room main nights. So pretty simple to do. Um, 
Apple and Google, you don't have to do anything. It's going to automatically do it. Uh, with Google, you'll have to add it to a room because it's not automatically going to add. With Amazon, um, it adds in, but it's you do have to do the Discover devices like you always do. So, what did we learn? Well, um, like anything, I like I said, I've not really messed around with a whole lot of three-way wiring ever. Um, so it was... It was a fun experience, if nothing else. You know, I followed the instructions. It didn't work the first time. I mean, literally no power going to the switch. So obviously that tells you that it is either not getting the neutral connection or it's not getting the hot wire connection. So then you kind of troubleshoot through. So I pulled it out. I didn't feel me pulling the, the switch back out. And I looked at the switch stuff in the back of the thing where the neutral wire was coming from and the hot wire coming in. I had going back all cross over to the other switch. And so that kind of triggered, oh, I must have something... Just, just not right. So I took the hot and the, I think it was the, the red wire, and just swapped them on which leads were coming in. So the hot to the hot wire on the, the smart, uh, well, I guess it's up in the wall, right? And, uh, and yeah, you saw what I did. More than anything else, I, I did go back to, oh, I'm sorry, on the phone, I went back to the wiring diagram just looking at it, and I realized that it was, the, in, in its case, how it was actually lined up, the hot was kind of coming in on the opposite side, on the mechanical switch side, and then it came over to the um, the smart switch side, and then up. In my case, how I was setting it up, it was backwards. The hot wire was, or the the main line was coming in where I was putting the smart switch. And you can go either way because the the neutral wire does transfer through. Um, so no matter what you do, you should be able to do it on either side. I just chose to do it the other way, so it did. It kind of just made something a little bit backwards on my wiring. Uh, pretty easy to solve. And to be honest, that's how you should solve it. So make sure that obviously everything's connected. If everything's connected, that you just have one wire uh, switched. Um, same thing goes, I, I've, I've, I looked up a little bit on three-way. If you have where the the switch, you know, usually on the if you have two mechanical switches and one is kind of a master, you're actually sending power on the on the line wire. So it's... I'm not trying to get too complicated here, but the, e, the in my opinion, at least, the best way to learn, and especially with your own home, to, to really understand how things are, are done properly, so you can actually troubleshoot down the road if something actually happens, is by doing things. In this case, make sure you have the power turned off properly before you start messing around with anything. If, you, if you're not comfortable with that, get a, basically, a, a sniffer, a sniffer where it actually can see if there's any energized source in the box that you're working on. I do have one. I didn't use it on this video, but real easy way of method. If I know the switches are working before I kick the power off and now they're not working, pretty safe to bet that we know that we're good. Um, and of course, I'm a little more comfortable in my own home because I'm understanding more and more how things are wired. Same thing goes if you have to add things, change things, have to mess with things, or you want to modify things, it's great to feel the comfort, you know, more comfortable in doing stuff in your own home. So that said, guys, um, you know, I didn't, you know, this is not part of the the install video because, uh, like I said, I already had this installed upstairs. But I have I have used the Lutron mechanical switches, the Legrand mechanical switches, and the Leviton mechanical switches, and out of the three. The Lutron is my favorite. Uh, it is a little pricier. The Legrand are definitely the cheapest, but followed by the Leviton, followed by the Lutron. So these are the priciest of the three, but if you're gonna replace the mechanical switches in your home as well as putting these smart switches in, um, the the Claro from Lutron is fantastic. They also make uh, a little bit nicer, fancier uh, face plates that uh, have a cover that covers over the screws even, so you don't even see the screws. And I'm thinking about maybe changing over to that rather than the uh, 69 cent special from Menards. So, not saying this is a review so much. This is more of a setup. Uh, but I bought all these products off Amazon myself. I'm going to put links down below um, if you're looking at any of this stuff. Um, to all the stuff that I used in this setup video, it's all going to be down below. I'll also put down below and at the end of the video some links to other Lutron installs that I've done in the past. Um, so, yeah, 
I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the setup. Thank you for sticking to the end. As always, like, comment, subscribe, uh, comment below, or if you have a longer, more personal question that you definitely want me to get back to you on, that you have a question on, head over to techgooch.com. You can get a hold of me directly through there and email me direct. And uh, I usually ask, to, so far I'm 100% response rate. So we'll see if that keeps going. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you back here on GeekSmart for another future video install. We'll see you soon. Oh, 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 oh,